It was a few weeks ago that the hay bales began to disappear. Every morning when I woke up, each one of them had moved a few dozen yards from where they had been before. I assumed these were pranksters with nothing else to do, so I ignored it. After a few days, the bales began to move closer to the farm boundaries. I got tired of the game by then and decided to push them back. By the time I was done moving them, I felt ready to break the neck of any little idiot who tried to screw with me. The next morning, I found each and every one of my horses decapitated. The smell was such disgusting that woke me up. Each one lay on the side of his stall, and there was no sign of the heads. I spent the rest of the day cleaning up the mess and burying the remains. It was when I finished that I noticed that all the hay bales had returned to where they were left the day before, scattered throughout the fields. This time, I left them there. That night, I sat on the porch, shotgun in hand and a pot of coffee at my side. I waited for hours, surveying the fields. And finally, I was beginning to fall asleep, and I will have except that I hear a noise and the rustling of the trees in the nearby woods. I stood up, my heart pounding with excitement, hoping to finally capture the bastard. I pointed the gun anxiously, waiting for whoever it was to approach. But when I finally saw what was approaching, I got freeze. It was not a person. It was a huge creature, it had several legs. It looked like a praying mantis, an insect, but huge, almost 10 feet tall, and it was very strong. Very strong as it was carrying the hay bales without much effort. At that moment, I hesitated to shut, I was paralyzed anyway, but I doubted that my poor gun could finish off something that so easily decapitated six horses. Before leaving, he turned his gaze toward the house. I felt his eyes watching me in the shadows. But whenever he saw me or not, I could not tell. Afterwards, he turned it silently and went back the way he came disappearing into the darkness of the forest. It took me an hour to gather enough courage to move again. I went inside after a while, but I didn't sleep that night. It was only once the sun came up that I dared to go out onto the porch and into the fields. The hay bales were where he left them, and strangely enough, he did not move them as much as in the course of the previous days. He took an invisible shape in the fields, and as I watched them, I noticed that they form a sort of line. And in fact, as I walk around the house, I noticed that they form a circle of which I was the center. At first, I thought they had been moved randomly around the house, but now I could see that they had been placed in some sort of boundary. This thing was sending me a message. I didn't sleep well that night, and if I did, I was only because I was exhausted. The next morning, the bales hadn't moved. They didn't for the rest of the week, in fact. They were finally where that thing wanted them. I made myself sick trying to understand all of this. Why will this thing spend so much energy moving my bales and treating me so violently when I tried to move them? Killing my horses was just that. A threat. A smart threat, in fact. That scared me so much and I could understand the implications of it. 
The sound of a car heading down to the road toward my farm filled me with excitement one morning. I had been planning to leave the place ever since I saw the thing, but I didn't want to risk doing it by foot and have that thing kill me like it killed my horses. But if I managed to get into the car of whoever was coming down to the road, maybe I could escape before it stopped me. I didn't know or care who was it. I decided that the moment they stopped the car, I would jump into the passenger seat and tell them to get the hell out of the place. I didn't get the chance. The car moved slowly down to the road, lurching over the difficult terrain. I quietly told him to hurry up, and it was as it passed between two bales located on either side of the road that I hear a high-pitched thundering coming through the woods. The thing emerged from the trees, galloping with its six terrible and skeletal legs in the direction of the car. Within seconds, it was there, slamming into the vehicle in the same manner as a big cat. It lived and smashed the vehicle with no trouble. And the man whoever he was, screamed, and I could hear him amidst the crunching of the metal and glass. He only stopped once the creature squeezed it with his paw and smashed it. He threw it away and stood upright, letting me get a good look at him. In the sun, I could see how inhuman this being was. It was composed entirely of something living and hideous that had been pieced together in a crude imitation of a human figure. My eyes were still focused on the car, its engine still sputtering in the middle of the two bales of the road. Suddenly I understood. The message was clear. I was the prisoner of this thing and I was not allowed to have visitors. I was trapped there. I became his pet. I've done a lot of thinking over the last few days since I saw it crush that man's chest. If I tried to escape, I might have the same doom. I don't know what cruel god dealed me such a, an unkind fate but I can't stand being here anymore. I've thought about that a lot over the last few days. Maybe I'll try to escape. Either way, I hope no one else will ever come across that creature. The creature that stalks the fields.